50 issues now. So we're celebrating our 50th issue right now. We're being big 50, big 5-0, baby. Let's walk back here first. With my man, Billy Jam. <laughs> conference room where all the big decisions are made, the source, all decisions that either you agree with or disagree with, but we have some of our people, some of our people look out, some of our people don't, and you see we got Naughty, we got the Ghetto Boys, we got Truck Quest, we got Breed, we got Digit, Yolanda. <laughs> I do not give a damn for a hip-hop slam, and I'm chilling here with John Schechter, the editor, and uh, James Bernard, the, what's your exact title again? <laughs> Billy, you have a very small short-term memory. I'm much closer to Billy and John than I care to be at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what causes short-term memory loss? We all know that, right? Dan K. So, um, I am the senior editor. So anyway, tell us, like, the source, how long has it been in existence now? How many years? Well, the source started in 1988, so I guess that makes about five years and, and counting. Um, we've been in operation uh, in full swing at the level we're at now. It's been since about the summer of 1990 when we, when we moved the business here to New York City, and we've been here ever since. So in these, this day and age, I mean, just in the last month, I've heard of two or three new hip-hop magazines coming out. I mean, just there's so many that you talk to record labels and they say they can't even keep up with the advertising dollars. What do you think sets the source apart, James, from the others? We've been here for 50 issues, and we'll be here for another 50 issues. 
And then yep. 50 more after that. And 50 more after that. That's what sets us apart. 50, like 5 0. But for someone who's just going out and they're going to buy one magazine, why is this? Because a lot of people I know, they'll buy the source over rap pages, rap sheet, or whatever. Why, why is that? Because it's the most up to date information. It's the most, it's just the best. It's just the best. If you want the best. Right, exactly. We give props. You know, we don't we don't have any beef with anybody. We just feel that we're the leaders in the field because we um, understand the music and have spent a lot of time trying to develop a complete package that covers the music, the the social and political issues that are connected to the music, the style, and basically all the real nitty gritty hip hop stuff that we know the fans want to hear about. And we try to stay on the cutting edge every month. So you feel like you're just sort of reflecting what people would have, the questions they would have when you do interviews or the reviews. Because all of us are hip-hop fans that put it together, so we all, you know, put our heart into it and basically, you know, ask the questions and cover the artists that we want to listen to, and hopefully it's the same artists that everyone out there wants to listen to, too. Now, I know from talking to people, a lot, a lot of people have problems with the, the rating system, and maybe it's just because everybody has their own opinion, they, they dis you know, everyone would agree or disagree on those. What, what is the most common complaint that you get? It's about the ratings, I would say. I mean, we get a lot of complaints from people. Um, not a lot, I would say. Like, you know, every month there's a couple, a couple groups or fans or of certain groups that, that, don't, that disagree with the ratings, but we maintain and stand by them because it, we're serving as like a consumer guide. I mean, there's so many, now more than ever, the market is so crowded with rap records that you need somebody to be out there sifting through the dozens and dozens of albums that come out every month to try to find what's really worthwhile. If you disagree with a few ratings, it's it's inevitable. I mean, no one's going to agree with every single one, but the purpose of it is to try to, you know, let the good things stand apart from the not so good or mediocre things. And so for that reason, we will continue to do ratings. And with our music czar, Reginald T. Dennis at the helm, you know, we're confident that uh, we're going on the right path. Now you just have one of your editorial meetings today. What do you decide in those meetings? Everything from <coughs> the covers to the content to everything. We just have knockdown, drag out fights every morning. Now there's a brand new issue out. Who's on the cover of that one? Chris Brown. Chris Brown. So how did you decide that? And is this going to be another TLC controversy? <laughs> it quite possibly will be. It was a big knockdown, drag out fight. I tell you that much. I mean, the reason why we did it is because we had this whole package in there about kids. And, you know, they're young rappers, and they're 15 years old, and they're 15, year old, 15 years old, like a lot of the kids were talking about in those pieces. So we thought that they typified that. We weren't, you know, and they are, like, they're going to, they represent the new generation of, of rap fans. So a lot of kids, we got a letter this morning from a kid who, was, who said he was born in 1979, who was breakdancing in kindergarten in 1984. <laughs> Reggie got a letter, straight up. And that's, those kids are, need to be represented. Who do you think reads the source then? What age group and what, what race? Uh, I think everybody who's interested in hip hop, a real hip hop. True. And uh, yeah, like our, our fans, you know, our average age is about 21, 22, so it's like an older college age average reader. That's not to say that there's not younger and older readers reading it too, but the median is about uh, 21, 22 years old, and it's mixed racially. It's, it's basically every race represented, you know, Latino, black, white. Asian, yeah. Now, let's talk about the, the upcoming issue. It's a special issue for you, right? That's correct. Our upcoming issue is uh, the 50th issue of The Source. It's the November issue. We're very excited because uh, we worked a lo long time on uh, putting it together. It represents hip-hop history from top to bottom. You may be familiar with an issue we did in the past. It's the decade of rap. Um, this is a way improved version of that because we've had the resources to put together a lot of pictures, uh, exclusive old shots that you're never going to see anywhere else. Um, color pictures from like Cole, Cold Crush Brothers, Busy B, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, all kinds of uh, in interesting information. And the centerpiece of the issue is a conversation between Africa Bambata, Grandmaster Flash, and Cool DJ Herc three DJs who are considered the godfathers of hip-hop, the pioneers, and the conversation is moderated by uh, renowned critic Nelson George, and it's, uh, that's the cover story for the November issue, and we're very excited because it's a chance to really put, you know, the twi twist on things and put in the forefront the artists that pioneered this music and this culture, and, uh, you know, that make sure that everybody knows how it started, because, you know, if it weren't for them, many of us wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. Yeah, and also, too, I don't think they got really enough props overall. A lot of people just think that rap started in, what, 1990 or something. Yeah, well, there's, you know, a lot of people out there who, who don't really know the background and the history. A lot of people think Run DMC was the first rap group, or 
They think that, you know, uh, I don't know, they don't really understand that even even like the Sugar Hill Gang wasn't the first rap group. There's a lot that comes before that. And so our purpose was really to just, you know, in, in a, in a easy-to-digest fashion to present the history um, and then, uh, you know, just devote a special issue to it. And because it's our 50th issue, the occasion worked out together because it's a special issue and it's like our rem remembering our history for a minute, but really it's remembering the history of hip-hop overall. And, uh, you know, and then we're going to move forward and just continue to be on the cutting edge for the next coming months. Yeah. Also, too, it kind of ties in with the new KRS-One album, which seems to be a tribute to the old school, too. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah, you know, Chris is... Chris is uh, well, there's my phone now, but Chris is, you know, he's always been a, a devotee of, of true hip-hop. And so, you know, it's, it's connected to the same themes um, that are going on in, in, in his album. Yeah. When you get that, let me just ask you a quick question, James. Yeah. A lot of people in the West Coast feel that the source is definitely an East Coast. It's based here in New York City, an East Coast magazine, and that it tends to ignore a lot of West Coast rappers. How do you feel? Well, I mean, I think that I think that's wrong. I think if you look at the the people we put in the cover, I think if you look at the ratings, I think you'll see that you know we're fans of all good hip hop. You know, Spice One, Scarface, you know, Drain Him in L. A. Quick hieroglyphics. I think that we we represent. We represent. Now another thing, that another comparison that people have made when the source started out, and especially today, is that it's kind of like it was the Rolling Stone, really, of, of, of rap music. It was the first magazine that really got down to the nitty gritty and just talked about rap as an art form. How do you think it'll be in 10 or 20 years' time? You think it'll be like the way Rolling Stone is today, 25 years after its inception? Well, we refuse to go corporate, so that's kind of one thing that's keeping us on the underground. Um, I mean, we hope to be as successful as Rolling Stone, of course. Uh, and we hope to can be as has have the longevity of Rolling Stone, and we feel that we will because hip hop is not going anywhere. It's a, it's a movement in the sense that rock was to the Rolling Stone generation, except it's just even more powerful because it's crossing all boundaries and it's you know affecting all spheres of society, and it's doing so in a way that we're going to always be there. You know, ha as hip hop develops as a music and a culture, we hope to develop as a magazine and be there for the whole ride. So you know, we don't see any end in sight to the music or the magazine and hopefully we'll be as successful as, as Rolling Stone. And there you have it. God damn it all to hell. Live from the source office in New York City. John Schechter and James Bernard. I'm Billy Jam.